NIMBYs. They're in my backyard now. So for those who don't know, I live in MacArthur, which is just south of Campbelltown and is the final stop for T8 services. And while I was going about my day, I spotted some flyers about talking about how a new development in the area should be stopped. Intrigued, I decided to take a look. And of course, there were the typical NIMBY arguments. So I thought today we'd take a look at some of them using the petition of MacArthur as an example. So first up, what is the development that's caused this fuss? Well, it's a nine-story development consisting of 11 separate buildings housing 1,250 new units, which is a fair amount. According to Landcom, the developer, they expect around 2,460 new residents, which is nothing to scoff at. So your next obvious question is going to be, well, where is this development specifically? Well, I'm going to keep that a secret for now while I discuss our first point, that being traffic and parking. Almost every NIMBY will bring up traffic or parking as an argument to stop development. And in some cases, it can be a valid concern. If your area is mostly car dependent, bringing in new people is only going to make traffic worse. And losing parking, like in this development, just adds another hassle to get around. Although funnily enough, while MacArthur in most of the Southwest is pretty car dependent, you see the same argument appear in areas with good walkability and good public transport, like Caringbar or Kensington. So it's not always a valid concern, but in MacArthur, it must be. Right? It must be far from public transport and amenities so people always have to drive to get to work or go shopping. So where must the proposal be then? Is it here? No. Is it here? No. It's right next to MacArthur Station. <laughs> a major intercity and suburban train station, as well as bus interchange, and integrated with the area's main shopping centre. And not to forget, it's going to be a future metro station too. I cannot imagine that there is a better greenfield site in this country to build 1,250 new apartments. So sure, like the petition says, a lot of these people will probably have cars, but will they need them to go shopping? Considering how close MacArthur Square is, I highly doubt they will. Well, what about work? Well, it's an hour to the CBD and Parramatta by train, so unless they work somewhere far from a train line, they won't need to drive. And even if they do, well, the area is a major bus interchange too. So when Lancome says they did an assessment that found that this new development was unlikely to increase traffic in the area, I'm inclined to believe them. Okay, well, what about parking then? Well, there's a 300 spot free car park that is set to close, but there's a buttload of parking around Campbelltown Station, enough to make 1970s Houston blush, and there's even this giant lot near MacArthur that's seemingly been abandoned. Not to forget the additional commuter car parking to the west of the station. Either way, if you're getting the train, there's adequate parking, and there's also the alternative of just getting the bus. And if you go into MacArthur Square to go shopping, well, it has a giant car park too. But, as a local, I do know that car park does get full. But at the same time, most of the people living in this development are not going to be driving to MacArthur Square. And if you drive into the university, well, they have a giant car park here that I've never seen full. So, in reality, losing 300 parking spots here is really not that much of an issue. So, suffice to say, the argument that this new development will cause additional traffic and parking is fairly weak. Okay, well what's our second point then? Well, because this is a greenfield development, it's being built on top of a small swamp and bushland area, and construction will require substantial cutting and filling to level the site, which can be quite destructive to the environment. The petition makes it out as if the entire swamp and bushland area will be destroyed, which just isn't the case. Most of the developments that take place in the eastern part of the site, with the western part of the site mostly to become parkland, but for simplicity, I'll address it as if the entire area is being developed. So, now we're destroying some swampland. And as an environmentalist myself, I don't really think that's a good thing. But let's say we don't build this development. Those 1,250 homes are not just going to disappear. They're going to be built elsewhere. Well, where are they going to go? Statistically, further west in Camden or further south at Wollondilly, where there'll more than likely be low-density suburban developments. So you have to ask the question, What's more valuable? Two kilometres of swampland next to a railway station, or nine square kilometres of bushland far from public transport, where everyone will probably have to drive. Which also kind of means that not building this development would more than likely make traffic worse. But, alas. The reality is, homes need to be built. And if they're not built here, they're built elsewhere. And while losing some swampland is bad, don't get me wrong, but losing four times that amount of bushland is arguably far worse especially when it's being lost to car-dependent sprawl. Although not to forget, in this case, the development is still preserving most of the swampland, 
So in reality, the figure should be nine times instead of four times, but meh. So now we move on to our third point. Landcom has stated that the majority of the unit will be market rate, except for 10% which will be affordable housing. To quote the petition, only 10% is affordable housing. So do not try and say this will solve our housing crisis when this is a matter of corporate greed, not for the better of the people. You hear this often, and it's kind of true. This one development will not solve our housing crisis, especially with only 10% below market rate units. And yes, Landcom is a private company, and they expect to make a profit on this project, and they expect to do this by maximizing the amount of units they can put on this land. The truth is, is that what caused our housing crisis, and how we can fix it, is a significant matter of debate. And while supply is not the sole factor, it is a common contributor, alongside things such as the financialization of the housing market, and a lack of skilled labor to actually build houses. I'll probably do a full video going to this in future, but for the time being, I'll list some links in the description if you're curious. Lack of supply isn't the sole cause, and this one development is going to solve everything. But, NIMBY groups kicking up a stink any time a new development is approved, trying to get it cancelled or scaled back, with all of that combined, yes, it does have an impact on supply. But, let's say we even turn around and say, actually, this development is 100% affordable housing. It's not the case, but let's say it is. Well, NIMBY groups have kicked up a stink about affordable housing projects in the past. So a lot of the time, it's just an argument to get projects shut down. And now we arrive at the final point of the petition. They say, They plan to demolish the pedestrian access bridge that leads from Goldsmith Avenue to MacArthur Station, which will track residents inside the estate even more. Which is partially true. This is another common tactic used by NIMBYs. Exaggeration and inconvenience. We've even seen this before when I was talking about the Swampland, where the petition makes it out as if the entire Swampland was going to be destroyed, when well, that's not the case. That previous line makes it sound as if the bridge will be closing permanently. Which just isn't true, it's being replaced. And from just looking at it, I don't think many people will be wondering why. But it is true that it will be closed. Temporarily during construction. And when it is closed, it will be replaced by a shuttle bus. Which isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. NIMBYs will often exaggerate the inconvenience of works. Because reality is people don't like change. Or being inconvenienced, no matter how small the issue is. So you can pretty easily scare people, especially if you use half-truths. I do need to say, I'm not saying the petitioner is malicious, but I'm just saying it's a common tactic. Anyway, with all those points covered, what am I actually saying? NIMBY arguments often are pretty straightforward and make a lot of sense at first glance, and often work because there really aren't people there to rebuke them like this. The reality is, while there's sometimes valid concerns, they're often there just to stop development outright, not to actually fix a project. As for why they do this, this can be anything from racism to classism to just concerns about change. But if I want to end on anything, it's this. As NIMBYs who advocate for abundant housing, while we may not agree with NIMBYs, and it can be frustrating listening to some of their arguments, they sometimes do raise valid concerns that should be addressed. For example, if this development was located on a Rellon Road, which I can tell you gets packed during peak hour, I would probably agree with the parking and traffic concerns, but that's not the case. But apart from that, there are some valid concerns, like the lack of a bus route in MacArthur Heights, except for school buses and the university shuttle, but they don't really count. So when the petitioner says that they should introduce a bus route in there, yeah, that's a good idea. They should do it. A second point is that the suburb of MacArthur Heights only has two entrances, one onto Norellan Road and one onto Gilcrest Drive. And in the petition, they propose adding another entrance onto Menangle Road, which is actually a valid point. Obviously, ignoring the Hume Highway, the next road crossing past Gilcrest Drive is until you get to Menangle Park Station, which is a fair way to go. So adding another entrance to the suburb and another rail crossing would probably help alleviate traffic quite a bit. Obviously, it has some issues, namely that on the cheap end, it have to be a level crossing, which is a big no-no, or it'd have to be a substantial bridge, which is also really expensive, but adding another entrance and another railway crossing is a good idea. And the third and final point brought up by the petition is adding a railway station for Glen Alpine and MacArthur Heights with free parking, which is also a good idea. It would make accessing public transport for people in those areas easier. Although I'd probably drop the free parking, but that's a topic for a future video. But anyway, these final two points especially would be a great idea if we decided to extend electrification past the old Glenlee Colliery. So while I disagree with the petition as a whole, it has some good points. 
And as NIMBYs, finding some of the issues and proposals that NIMBYs put out and advocating for solutions to problems while addressing some of the more fruitless arguments is one of the best ways we can raise support to make our cities better. But with that, I bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. If you disagree with me or just have anything to say, please leave it in the comments below. Also, for full disclosure, I'm not affiliated with Landcom or any developer, and all my opinions expressed here are my own. I know that's probably not required, but I just want to make it clear. Either way, see you on the next one.